I just got back from Tri-State where I've been attending for close to 30 years and the generational divide has never been more apparent to me. That said, these camp conferences are terrific environments for old heads and young heads to learn from each other and appreciate each other's talents and learn how to communicate with one another. Nobody articulates this better than Everwood Day Camp's newest employee, Justin Pritikin. So we had to do an emergency podcast and get him back on. This is the Day Camp Pod. Welcome back to the Day Camp Podcast. I'm Andy Pritikin, Director of Liberty Lake and the Philly suburbs of New Jersey. And I am joined today for this emergency podcast. My goodness. Justin, disrupting Chi State. So I had to grab him while he was hot, while he was bothered, right? While you, while you got all this, uh, this fire in your belly. So welcome back, Justin. It's great to be back. I will say the fire has cooled off. Um, I've spent my last, um, I got back very late Thursday night and between Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I've interviewed more than two dozen candidates to work at Everwood Day Camp. And so honestly, I, I'm so tired of talking. Um, so you gotta, you gotta really be the hostess with the mostest for me, AP, and oh, really no, get it I'm out of me. You down a path, baby. So you all just, right, just buckle up, Buttercup. Sounds good. All right. So first of all, when we last spoke to Justin Pritikin, he was, he was. This was before you were even a full-time employee of Lululemon. All right. So why don't you just take us on the little journey you went on from uh, from the time you graduated college uh, in, until this moment here? Just go for it, Andy. I don't know if you did karaoke one too many nights in Atlantic City, but we for sure talked on this podcast when I was a full-time employee for Lululemon, 100%, um, because it was at the end of my slideshow. I had all my day camp pods, but I'll just share my time uh, leaving Lululemon to now. Basically, I realized that I could uh, design clothes and work in a fancy little office building in Los Angeles when I'm 40, so while I'm young and am not married and don't need to save money for my kids' college tuition, I can go do young people's things. And that means taking a job in a, you know, industry I'm way more passionate about that I, I've been, you know, kind of turned into Frankenstein's monster a bit growing up as a Nepo baby in the camp industry, uh, doing something I care more about for a substantial pay cut. And so, yeah, I ended up at Everwood in... Uh, the south shores of Boston, about 30 minutes uh, south of Lake Brookline. And uh, I work as the director of staff here and I hire staff. I've hired about now 80 in the in less than one working month of like 30 days working. And I'm having a great time and I'm super amped to, you know, do some cool stuff with this camp. And I'm helping out some other camps here and there and give back to the industry that has given so much to me. And you know, and that you've given back to as well. So that's kind of where I'm at in life. So that's your, that's your geographical marker, 30 minutes south of Brookline. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like 15 minutes east of Gillette stadium, you know, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Oh yeah. Patriots place. That's my spots where I'm going after this to go cycling. (laughs) Lovely. All right. So Justin gave a presentation at Tri-State. He called it engaging and maintaining Gen Z, sort of a misnomer a bit, but, um, it, uh, it was great. Uh, got a lot of great feedback. Uh, someone offered to double your salary uh, and take you away. Um, so sure. I hope Scott is listening to this. Um, but, uh, <laughs> so we're going to just start going through this little thing and, and, and do a little Q&A based on this. All right. So, uh, you know, I think one of the big points that I got out of it is, you know, every camp has Gen Z people on staff, whether they're full-time, part-time, seasonal, or whatever. And utilizing your staff to speak their language, not you, right? Coming at them at their level, right? Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, you want to embellish on that a bit? I would love to. Andy, you are in your 50s and you are a true talent in so many capacities and you have such a unique skill set that's an expert level at 50 different things right yes you should be using your time accordingly we should be stretching our people the right way and playing at our strengths and your strength is not talking to a 16 year old now could you totally should you no um you can give that responsibility to a 22 year old to do and 
it might not be done exactly to your liking, but it'll be someone speaking the 16 year old's language and you can coach up that 22 year old to do it in an interview style capacity. And it's just, look, what I love about working at Everwood is I have a director of operations who doesn't have to, you know, for lack of better words, waste their time interviewing 16 year olds. I can handle it for them and they can deal with how our zip line failed inspection. Right. And so I can't deal with that. I have no idea how to do that. Great. Let's play to our strengths. I, I get it. Right. Uh, young people interviewing young people that, that that's all well and good as far as getting them to sign up. And that seems to be your big thing. Let's get them through the door. Let's get them, you know, to sign on the line that's dotted and all that kind of thing. But I think that what a lot of the uh, older people, more experienced people would be saying in this kind of thing is that the interview is also the first day of orientation in many ways. And are, are we handing, you know, not everybody has the expertise that you have. And if you just, you know, if you drafted some 23, 24, 25 year old kind of person to be, you know, this interviewing kind of person, that's absolutely luring them in. Okay. Cause that's an important part. That's like the most important part. Are they going to be able to also bestow the amount of knowledge and wisdom the right way? So that's also sort of like the first day of orientation or, or am I just being too optimistic? Mm. I think you're on the right page. I just, I disagree a little with some stuff. First and foremost, when I do an interview, yeah, there is a little bit of orientation to it. I talk about the schedule. I talk about uh, our technology policy at camp. I talk salary because I'm comfortable doing it and because that's, I'm going to screen them out if they can't uh, value what we value in terms of availability and those three previous topics. But I talk about it in the form of practice, not the policies of it, not what you'd go over in orientation, where I talk about technology of how you're going to bring your phone to camp. You're just never going to take it out because you're not getting paid to watch TikTok. You're going to keep it in your back, which makes sense to people instead of 55-year-old Andy Pritikin going, no phones at camp because we're growing great kids and technology is bad. And I read book and studies say and that just doesn't make sense to people when you don't tell them how it actually works. And so, yeah, it's a bit orientation-y in that, that realm. But I think the thing is, is I got to get you excited to come to camp. And then once you come to camp, I can beat you over the head with what camp is orientation style. And so I have to get you interested in doing this job. And who's going to get you more interested? One of your peers. So when they show up, I'm just here to get you all excited and make you see how you are going to be super awesome at this camp for a lack of a better term and i get people really jazzed up and excited to come here which means and i'm i'm you know using the language that we talk about about how it's fun how it's social how it's outdoors and all that and so when they come here i have to deliver on that promise in orientation land and orientation needs to be fun social and outdoors as well, right, well and then we can and then we can I mean, we can train uh, people on it. Great points. So, so also, I mean, you, you had some great screens at the beginning of your uh, session. Uh, you had that Lorax screen and then you had all the, all the language that gets used today that mm -hmm. much of which bewilders people that are, you know, over 30 years old. And, um, and you also had the, uh, the slide that shows all the crazy crap that you have lived through in your mm -hmm. life and how your life is so much different uh, than the lives of so many older people. And, and, and I think a huge point of your session is that we have these secret weapons we have these high school and college students that work for us and we just completely underutilize them in regards to our messaging and our branding and 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 our ability to get use these people to lure people in honestly you're correct i think it's simpler i just don't think camps value them as much as they think they do or make it clear to people and this is going to sound this is where i'm going to go loraxy and represent gen z here but i think it's a, an absolute uh, facade when camps tell me that they value young people but aren't able to retain them through part-time capacities interviewing people. And then when I hear on podcasts that a 55-year-old camp director has to interview every single 16-year-old that comes to the door, I go, well, then it's, it's just clear that you don't think in a way that it's like, hey, I could pass this on to someone to keep someone who's super talented by giving them more stuff to do and paying them hourly for a couple of hours a week during the uh, school year and whatnot. Because I there's people who love camp and there's so many oh god graduating college last may and seeing people who love camp take bs jobs even though they tell me <laughs> if there was a job for them in camp they would do it 
And I just go, wow, you could easily not buy maybe three Wibbit pieces, cut back on spending in X, Y, and Z, and bring someone in in a temporary position and do it. And so you can't tell me you value young people and you, you care about this kind of stuff when like on the execution side, it's not true. And this goes from camps to like global stuff with, you know, I don't want to go on a tangent well, about I mean, the look, industry, you, you but speak. like it, I see it in the American Camp Association too. And it's like, it's a little, you know, it, it, it frightens me when, you know, you're saying this, but you're not practicing it. Yeah. Well, you know, camps are, you know, they're businesses, but very often they're not run like businesses. I know, but guess what? Secession is becoming more and more dire as the folks 10 years older than you are thinking about hanging it up. Mm -hmm. And would you rather pass it to someone who you mentored, trained, and could really run it, such as an Eric Hillis, like a protege type person who you're able to grow and develop at a camp long term? Yeah, I bet you most camps would love to do that. Heck yeah. so it's like you got to invest in it. People are your best assets. We say this all the time. We love our staff. We do. Wait, we do? Okay. So then follow <laughs> through. Like I, I just, it's, it's a communication thing. Well, what's that? Um, just just to emphasize what you're saying right now. What was that slide you had with the? Um, it was the Twitter thing from that woman saying if they call you a rock, if they call you a rock star, they're under. Yeah, there's a there was a tweet that went viral, like I don't know, probably over the summer, and the whole thing was, is uh, some woman tweeted, you know, if, if they call you a rock star, it just means they're underpaying you. And it's the idea of like if you tell me I'm a rock star week one at your camp, and you tell me I'm a rock star week four. Well, why do I want to be a rock star week five if I'm still making mathematically five dollars an hour? And not that to say people are thinking like that, but you know, it's when people hit a wall, a week six slump, you know, feel underappreciated that they do calculate how much money they are making, and that becomes a problem for them all of a sudden. And so it's like if you're going to value your people, if you're going to hug your people, as that book that you have on your desk all the time says, like you got to make them feel that way. And so, you know, it's important to and that, praise and Justin. Justin had a great slide. It was a SpongeBob slide of SpongeBob looking drunk or something. And basically Justin say that we take a, we, um, we abuse our rock stars at camp very much so. Yeah, you do. And I think that, you know, I think last year, tri talked about how 2021 we survived, but there was damage because of it. And I, I spoke to a lot of uh, camp directors who were at that when I was facilitating with Kim Acock in a different session who brought that up and they were like, yeah, we're having a really hard time with retention. Word of mouth is horrible. We had to have less staff with the kids. Like the ratios weren't as good as they are normal normally. And we really burned people out. And so it's like, you got tough word of mouth and you got a tough way to retain people. It's, it's, a, it's a lose, lose in that situation. Well, well, by the way, at my day camp podcast round table at Tri-State, we were talking about staff salaries and <laughs> there are staffs out there even nonprofits and municipal programs paying high school kids well above what private camps are paying college kids out there. So, uh, so some people are getting it. Some people just have to do it because that's what they need to do in order to rope people in. But anyway, I want to, I want to cool. pivot to um, a little bit to social media. Mm -hmm. So, so one of the things I found surprising in your session was uh, uh, the focus that you have on Instagram because mm. You know, we have been sitting around for the last year saying, you know, the only thing that these kids are looking at is TikTok. You have told me numerous times that there are many people in your generation or older that are deleting their TikToks, like Joy from what, Los Angeles, right? Deleting their Instagrams. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yet you, that now you're saying that, you know, TikTok, and, and you, I'm going to give you the floor. You can correct me where I'm wrong here. But when you're posting to, when you're posting to TikTok, it's sort of going anywhere. Oh, it's, like Singapore, it's going to Antarctica, uh, right? Whatever. But it, with Instagram, you're able to more target, you know, specific people and all. Because, uh, in your words, Justin, like every like relatively normal person in Gen Z has an Instagram. Oh my God! Never be a journalist, Andy. You can't quote me. Oh God, um, I slander. That was ridiculous. All right, let me fix what you just said, okay? So, where to begin? What drives me crazy about this whole staffing crisis, in quotation, staffing crisis, because if I, if I can hire 80 staff in a month, it's not a crisis, okay? Um, at, in an area where I've never even seen how a day in this camp works. I don't even know. I haven't even been given a tour of this camp yet. It doesn't matter to me. It's, it's March, you know, 
It's a communication crisis, right? Where are people getting news, information? Where are they hanging out? What are they on in their free time? Social media, right? So we need to advertise camp on social media, right? Now, let's talk about the difference between TikTok and Instagram. As I said before, TikTok is where you discover something. Instagram is where you check in on something, where you confirm you've heard something. I'm going to look them up, right? Mm -hmm. So if I matched with someone on Tinder, if I met someone at SoulCycle, if my mom told me that the neighbor has a son my age, the first thing I'm going to do when I hear about these people is I'm going to look them up on Instagram. I'm going to look them up on Instagram. And because I am a working professional, if I can't find them on Instagram, I'm going to look them up on LinkedIn. I'm not going to look them up on TikTok next, right? That's where my search ends. People on Instagram curate the best six to nine images of themselves at a time. It's where they sell themselves. It's where they sell their brand. It's where I want to sell the brand of we are a fun place for you to grow and change kids' lives right? That's where I'm going to do it is on Instagram because that's what Instagram, the media platform is for. I can also really target people on Instagram because as you mentioned with TikTok, you post on TikTok, it can end up in Singapore. It can end up in Trinidad and Tobago, Indiana, Texas, Florida, my camps in Massachusetts. How does that help me? Right? So if I can control who's seeing my feed and I can really target the local community and the folks who are more prone to be in the right mindset to work with kids, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on the platform that does it. And there's multiple ways to do this. I would say first and foremost through Instagram is having staff repost things with them in it for your camp. Um, and that's a really great way to control the stream in which folks are going to see the content. The other side of this is, is you can hunt people on Instagram for a lack of a better term, where you can find local community colleges, you can find local high school clubs, nearby that have similar values, do similar things to the camp, and you can send them instant messages through the camp social media page. You can email them through the staffing email accounts and whatnot and do cold calling and cold, uh, whatever it used to be called back cold in the messaging. dinosaur era. Yeah, this is, it's called cold Instagram direct messaging or cold mass mailers through email, not through uh, paper. Mm -hmm. And so this is the way of the future because this is how you find and can curate the best people. I don't want to post on TikTok to find staff. That's like putting a job posting on Indeed, right? Indeed's a great place to find someone who wants to work, but not the great place to find someone who's going to change a child's life. You know, that it's just from my experience in this, it's opening up the can to Pandora's box of random people. So if I can target college students who also work side jobs as part-time soccer coaches, I can probably find a really good soccer instructor. Like so, it's just so, that simple. So, so just going back to um, TikTok for a second. So mm -hmm. if you're at a camp that has, you know, all, all your, you know, cylinders pump in with all the things you should be doing, what should be using, what you should, what should you be using TikTok for? TikTok's YouTube. TikTok's YouTube for me. It, it's a landing space to show off. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, digital platform to highlight aspects of your camp and to get exposure. You know, what, what happens if your camp gets a million TikTok views and the next video gets a thousand, nothing, nothing. Now, and you know what? I actually, there are some camps who are making great TikToks, right? There mm -hmm. are some camps. I'm not stupid guys. And neither are my friends who I send this stuff to. I know when you're paying to boost your TikTok views, when you got a million views and you got a thousand comments and likes total, like that algorithm doesn't, algorithm really yeah, wouldn't work like that. Ones, yeah, so. yeah. It's a nice little sound bite to say you have a million things, but I, uh, I can smell crap from a mile away <laughs> on social media. And so can other people my age. And so just be cautious with that. But like yesterday I was, you know, sitting on my butt in my bed and I was on TikTok and a camp's TikTok came up and they had like staff in it doing cool crap for lack of a better term and the comments honestly i actually screenshotted it because not because we were doing this but i sent it to uh to my girlfriend because i was like because we talk about camp tiktok because this is what young people talk about tiktok but then i talk about camp with people i care about so that's how come the first comment with ten thousand likes because this camp content people who posted it didn't control it is pay three dollars an hour hell effing no and it's just it's just people bashing salaries and pay and these people as a retired camp counselor it is not worth it 8,000 likes 
What? When I was 16, 17, I was getting paid 42 cents an hour, skull face. Not worth it to be a camp counselor. So you can have this great video, and that video has a million views, but it's getting bashed in the comment section. And they're not turning off comments. They're not monitoring this stuff. It's like people don't know what the hell they're doing is, is what it, it comes clear to me mm -hmm. in terms of managing these things. And so personally, I, I don't prefer to open up Pandora's box for this stuff. I, if I can just control the narrative, like why, why do it? So I, you can have a great TikTok page. I want to have a great TikTok page at Everwood. I'm going to work my butt off on that this year for the same reason I want a nice YouTube page. It's good advertising for exposure, but I don't expect a lot of payoff from it. That's not where I'm putting my eggs in the basket. All right, let's transition um, since we're talking about crappy stuff uh, on the internet and such. Let's talk mm. about the uh, the Canva problem that Camp has. Canva, What's holy that? hell. I mean, why? I, I would love to know. I, I think I understand the intention because it looks professional and chic in a compared way. Compared to nothing. Yeah. Compared to nothing, but like, get back to basics, you know? And it just, it's just, it's very loud, all this Canva. It's very loud. And, you know, my joke I made during the session, I remember, is I said, I, I brought up how there was this Canva post on uh, for Valentine's Day, and you have to be a premium Canva member to use it. So you got to pay eight bucks a month or something. And it was used more than 100,000 times in the world, not just by camps, but I saw camps use it. And it's just like, if something's in your feed that many times, it just, it's, it's obvious you didn't take a lot of time to do it. We know why you use Canva. Everyone knows why you use Canva. It's easy to use right? So it's just, it honestly, it's just like gross for that to keep showing up in people's feet. It's, it's, it's redundant. And also, you know, I don't know any 18 year old or 40 year old who's really going, oh my God, my camp didn't wish me a happy Valentine's day. Like what? I consult with a camp and I, uh, with their social media and I was telling them, I said, Hey, for St. Patrick's day, do not post some Canva crap, post like six kids wearing green. One of your camp colors is green. Literally post six happy campers wearing green, right? Happy St. Patrick's day. Be camp. Message like camp. Don't make some stupid Canva poster and post it and be like, happy St. Patrick's Day. Stick to your brand. Because what's happening is, is who uses Canva or those types of designs? Real estate companies, banks, law, law firms, boring jobs, right? Boring. And I say this because we're camp people, but like less than, you know, camp when it comes to fun professions. So then why do we carry ourselves like that? If we tell everyone how fun we are, but then on social media, it doesn't reflect that. We look like every boring nine to five office job where you need hand cream during the day because it's horrible. <laughs> like what? And, and going, going back to what we said, in every camp organization, even if you have 18 staff, you're going to have somebody that's halfway decent with graphics. 18 graphics. staff? Freaking pay your 16-year-old lifeguard to do it. I promise you. Like, it'll be decent as long as you just manage them. And what Justin's saying about it being old and, and you utilize what you have, you have the most amazing things to take pictures of. Children, Happy children, happy staff, gorgeous. Ah, age. pause, pause. Happy staff. Photos of staff will always do better than kids because it's the staff who's on Instagram. Okay, no, it's the, not the kids. Shots, the staff with the kids picture. Yeah, that's the money shot. But if you want your post to perform well, you're going to post photos of staff. You're going to make sure the brightness is there. Colors like yellow, green, light blue, light red, right? The joyful colors. Those are the posts that do well. And, and this isn't, you know, some, I'm not saying anything new. This is, you could Google this stuff. Um, but camps don't apply it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, right. I'm sitting there like confused. All right, so Justin, we, we have to pause for a moment and 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 do a little selling. So let's just transition into the fact that you did mention that you have a Wibbit there, right? And mm -hmm. I, there really isn't much that takes better pictures than kids and staff on a Wibbit. Would you agree? Let me tell you, a, a staff member helping a camper onto a Wibbit, you got great colors. You have a great moment in time. I love Wibbits. We bought three at Tri-State. <laughs> from our friends at commercial recreation specialists the fine purveyors of the best recreation solutions to keep camp growing strong check their website out at crs4rec.com because crs is serious about fun and my friend rich wills he goes to all these things and we saw them there did justin how much real estate did those people have taken up did you see were you in that exhibit hall and saw uh, how i i was I, unfortunately like Andy, i was i was not in there no i was uh, mingling 
Yeah, they, they, they have quite the setup in there. They really uh, do a lot. They're middlemen. They go out there and they find awesome products and bring them to the camp industry at all the different conferences that we do. All right, Justin. So here, that, next thing I want to talk about is the uh, staff interest form, which is something that you mm. have been harping on um, on the first few episodes that you were on the Day Camp podcast. Like and a year ago. Doing it. Yeah. I'm going to talk from Liberty Lakes perspective, okay? So I started doing it about um, a month or two ago. I guess two months ago, I uh, cut it down to, you know, whatever a handful of questions. I did it through my Microsoft 365 thing, right? It's a form and I am, they're just flooding in. Like I go to my inbox and it's literally like every five minutes I get a staff interest form. And, and my, uh, the guy that does all my web analytics and stuff told me that I actually have significantly less people going to my staff website pages, but I have significantly more conversions of people mm. building this thing out than I did mm. when it was, you know, for my database company uh, doing the college essay, as you like to say. So yeah. guess what? You were right about that one. Um, huh. Less than 10 minutes, got to be on the phone, as you like to say. Um, and actually, uh, Kim Acock, I was talking to her, I was talking about this, and she said that there's a camp out there. She sent me their link. Um, and on their website, it literally says the 30 second application. That's what it says above, above the button. So the kids. Oh, the okay, link. pause. I would, be, I would be careful calling that an application because there are some legal standards that need to come with an application. Okay. Right? Okay. I just, you know, look, I come from a. Your wife and my mother is was an auditor. Okay, so I do have that right, lens. Well, whatever on you want to call it, put in the words thirty. Well, you, seconds you gotta, you can't great. call an application. Andrew. Okay, but the thirty seconds of a thirty second interest form, call it what that you want to call it. But but I love that. I think that's super cool. Yeah, I don't put time on it. You know, some people take their time with it. Um, look, here's the deal with it. Here's what it comes down to. I can submit an application to rent a local apartment that will autofill based off of if I'm in my Chrome browser in less than a minute. I can apply for any job on LinkedIn or Indeed with one click, one click apply, Andy, one click. And I can buy things on Amazon in one click. I can get Netflix recommendations that I can start watching in one click. And yet- and once, you, and once, you fill out the common, once you fill out the common app, you can apply to- uh, 100 schools, yeah. So then why do I have to input uh, 35 minutes worth of information to a camper management information system to apply for your job. Why do you think you're so cool? That's what it comes down to. It's just you're speaking a language that no one else is speaking and no one's going to care to learn or do because they don't have to. And mm -hmm. so it's like you got to act the way the world is, is working. And so if I meet someone at a job fair, I want them to be able to fill out everything I need to know about them within 30 seconds. If you stumble across me on the internet, if one of my Instagram posts or boosted posts or whatever it is, or someone's repost of a photo interests you, you need to be able to leave your mark within 30 seconds so that I can follow up with you. It's more work for the employer, but I'm sorry, is there a hiring crisis? Yeah, I think we do have to be doing more work as an employer. There's a perceived hiring crisis. That's There's a perceived I'm... hiring crisis, right? <laughs> well, if I go to nine tri-state sessions and I go to 10 national sessions, I'm screamed at that there's a hiring crisis, but everyone's doing the same exact thing. And then the people were giving the platform to speak to the superstars of veterans of camping and whatnot, or the biggest rooms are saying the same things and not talking about digital marketing. Yeah, I expect the hiring crisis to continue. To be completely honest with you, <laughs> not not to sound like an angry twenty three year old, but like it just makes sense. It's like if everyone's doing the same thing and everyone's saying it's not working, no crap, it's not going to work. Yeah, well, I haven't hired seventy five people in the last month like you, but we have done very well. I have to say, um, things are are really really turned around. Um, just having a little trouble with these teachers, getting uh, burnt out teachers to come. Ah, uh, see, all right. Can I give you my strikes? I hired two today. Yeah. I kid you not. I hired, and you know what four though? Weeks, they're well, working four weeks, half days. What are they doing? No, they're working nine weeks, baby. I got them drinking <laughs> the Kool Aid because you know what? I don't go after older. I got like I got these two 25 year olds today. Mm -hmm. and it's just like they're not burnt out yet. So you say burnt out teachers? I mean. 25 you're still i'm 23 yeah, no, i'm still I cooking I know. yeah i get the young ones before the school suckers them into their summer program you gotta you gotta beat them to the punch yes 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 um well you were also you were comparing um you know you were talking about how we shouldn't be using indeed and such like that because mm -hmm. you said a summer job is a low stakes job 
Yes. Want to explain that line of thinking? Oh, well, so, I mean, people don't look at camp as a, this is a job in professional childhood development, right? Like they're becoming a guidance counselor at a school. They don't look at it like that, even though it is. They look at it as a part-time job. We are a full-time part-time job. So first and foremost, we have that barrier of communication we need to cross. Second, working with kids is not taken seriously in American society, right? Mm -hmm. What was the line you were told that made you want to become a camp director and leave teaching that I've heard you say a million times from your mentor? Go, please. You know what I'm talking about. Million dollars. Flexibility in my off season? Was that it? No, where you were told teachers should make a million dollars, but they don't. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we don't, as a society, we do, but as a society speaking, we don't value these people. So they don't take it seriously. Right. And so, and what comes out about camps, what is in American media and culture, wet, hot American summer, right? Not that people are watching it. Although the 2017 Netflix like remake was pretty good, but uh, like, this is like the iconography that people associate camp with. And so because of that, how would someone think this is a high stakes job? And so people sign up to work it on Indeed like they're going to work at Wendy's. And it's right. not well, what, what you're not, talking about is is a, a, a lot of camps. They're selling working at their camp as if they're selling it to people who know what the hell camp is. That's true. So what I do and, and pause. And so this is why digital marketing comes in. If I can show you what working at this camp looks like and you look at this and go, ooh, this is something I want to do, just from the look of it, not from me over explaining it to you, and I can one click get you in 30 seconds, that's why I've hired so many people. That's why my conversion rate on my interest form for people that I interview and hire is above 80%, and my one for CampMinder, which is the information management system I use, is like 55%, because people apply for CampMinder like they're applying for a job, not because they like see it necessarily for what it's, it is. I get people in in the same way that people buy things from Target when they're going online shopping and an ad pops up. Oh, I really want this backpack. Click. I can now buy it in one click. My credit card information autofills. I just have to type in the CVV, right? So I'm going to do that to you with working here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a personalized email. I'm going to talk to you like a 23-year-old to another 23-year-old, like we're at Starbucks drinking some pink drinks with our feet up, having a good time. We're going to talk about Taylor Swift. We're going to talk about music, what's going on in the world, right? And then we're going to talk camp. But at this point, we're cool with each other. And, and look, I ask the same questions I ask to everyone. And I do all the AM Skyer recommendations on things and all the ACA standards on what you should do in an interview. And, you know, but I also make it fun and more gauged to a 23-year-old and use 23-year-old and, you know, 16-year-old language during it. And it's just, it's just more natural for people. And then I follow up with them based off of what they like. And I become friends. This is so weird. I don't talk to my friends from college, but I talk to the friends I just employed. I'm texting them all the time and they're texting me, but it would be weird if a 55 year old was sending them texts like, holy crap, Kevin Durant's on the Suns now. That would be weird. But because I know this person's a Suns fan and we talked about it for five minutes during their interview, it's not weird. Mm -hmm. and, and you said, once you created that, that bond once you created the commitment then you can go in with the project real job stuff and talk about like you know how they're going to become better leaders and 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 you know i think i compared it to scientology skills. actually i think i said we got to get you in and then we can convert you so i said yeah, in my no, it's, it's culty but that's the thing i look i have to andy i have to convince you a hyper talented 16 year old that could be making minimum wage in the state of massachusetts which is 15 dollars an hour which, let's be honest right blue lemon is in Massachusetts, it's paying 23 an hour at a minimum, right? So mm -hmm. I have to convince you from taking that $23 an hour job to take a fat pay cut and work for me, right? How can I convince you in that same half hour, 45 minutes, hour, right? To also look at camp like Project Real Job wants you to, if you don't normally. It's, I, I can only fight so many battles at once. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things you mentioned uh in your in your thing in your workshop was utilizing like a um, a you can book dot me or a calendly kind of thing where you set up these uh, little talks and, and you get the built in reminders and stuff like that you know it's yeah like, I send so my you can book me is they get an email two days before they get an email a day before they get an email uh, twelve hours before they get an email an hour before and they get a text, text. Uh, no that's just the email side and then they also get an email 
uh, an hour before, 12 hours before, and day before. And this is something we I mentioned at the thing. Look, Gen Z, are we bad at answering our emails? For sure. Do we see everything you send us, email and text? Yes. We just choose not to answer it. And that's the truth with people. We are in a commu communication overload. I've gotten more than 100 emails and text messages in the last four hours, right? It is hard to be stretched so thin and have a work-life balance and a lot, yada, 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 yada. Once you get on the tri-state mailing list, it's brutal. <laughs> oh, my God. Or you <laughs> offer free help. <laughs> I did. So, <laughs> so, you, Justin, I can't believe you're utilizing email so much on these things. Why aren't you sending reminders through text messages? That's what like my dentist does. I do. I just told you on, you can do me. You there's can so many emails doesn't. involved. Yeah, I, I send a lot of emails Why and are text. you bothering I'm, people with emails? They don't want your Oh, dentist. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, they, look, it doesn't, if I'm not sending them, I don't care. Here's the thing. That's a digital automation system. So once I get you, I don't have to worry about doing anything. And it makes that, that's the best $5 a month ever. And then I have to now text you about all the stuff you told me about in your interview. I interviewed a, a young woman today who loves Lady Gaga. I love Lady Gaga. Next time Lady Gaga releases a song, I have to remember a few Texas person. I have enough on my plate. I got to do this 80 people that I just hired in a month. Like I, I got to remember this on my own. I can't worry about sending texts and emails about interviews. All right. So listen, before we get back to it, because we, we have a big battle coming up, Justin versus Andy battle that's coming up next. Oh, but, uh, first, we have to talk about someone that you just alluded to. It is our friends at AM Skyer, ladies and gentlemen. My favorite insurance company, truly. <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. Oh, we love AM Skyer. And, and uh, it was great being at uh, Tri-State and seeing like all dozen of them there walking around. And um, and our boy, Jeffrey. Um, and, 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 you know, they really do snap into action quickly. You know, and one of the things is that when you call there... <laughs> Uh, during the summer months, whatever time it is, you're not getting some answering service. You're not getting some nothing. You're getting a human, mm -hmm. and uh, and and they will get you to the right per person. Uh, one of the people I saw at uh, Tri-State uh, was their lawyer, who has has been so so instrumental for us. You know, like ever since I started Liberty Lake, uh, you know, over 20 years. Alan Cooper, uh, the guy's just really really top of his. And team. Alan and Alan gives amazing webinars about how to staff in a way that's not going to leave you liable for lawsuits that I attend. And I take so many notes on. Yeah. And if He's you're a genius. In camp, they're out there. Even if you missed them live, uh, they're out there. You can rewatch them. Um, that, they're pretty darn good. I'm having my staffing team watch them. So anyway, for over a hundred years, Justin, all right, multiple generations. Okay. AMSkyer.com. All right. Tell them that's pretty consent. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. Justin. So Let's talk about the Zoom thing, okay? Because oh, in 2020, 2021, all these cans were Zooming it up, you know, taking the easy way, okay? And, and you know, my statistics in 2021 showed me that the people that I met face-to-face -face versus the people that I Zoomed with, mm. that had a much better rate of them actually showing up for the first mm. day of camp. Can I ask you a question immediately? Yeah. Uh, statistics from 2020 and 2021? No, 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 no. I'm talking 2021. Okay, well, I'm talking, I'm Andrew, Andrew, I'm talking 2023, buddy. I'm talking right now. Okay. And so let me tell you something. I love you. And I think you're a genius. And I think you've done some amazing things. I think you're a trailblazer, man. I really do. Uh, I respect the hell out of you. This is, you're so out of depth on this one. Because let me tell you, if you ask me to do an in-person interview for a part-time job or a summer job, honestly, I'd be like, are you kidding me? You want me to come in? Because here's the thing, I live in, in convenience world. Teachers in college, man, like my junior, senior year, office hours weren't in person anymore. They'd go home. Office hours were on Zoom. There's no more going to college professors' like offices and doing this stuff. Everything's on Zoom. Interviews are on Zoom for clubs in colleges. No one's doing anything in person. It's just easier. It makes more sense. You could do it from your dorm. Why walk across campus? We interviewed my senior year for Special Olympics, 450 people on committee all over Zoom right? It's just how it is nowadays. And so it is a barrier of entry into your organization to tell someone, get a ride, come to my camp, meet with me in person for 30 awkward minutes in person, because people don't know how to talk to each other in person nowadays when they're young, especially in an interview setting, and then get a ride back home when they could just open up their laptop, hop on into a room with you and talk like they've been talking to their friends in breakout sessions all throughout high school, all throughout college, going to class like this, doing things like this, right? This is the way of the world nowadays. And so 
for you to be counterculture and bring them in for a 30 minute awkward in-person interview, it's, it's, you're, it's different. It's completely different than what you're used to. Mm -hmm. And so, and when the counter that I get to this is, oh, well, you know, we're trying to grow better kids and we want to push people Can out of their comfort counter, zones. Don't be countering for me. No, let I'm me just counter. giving you, I'm just giving you the stale pale male perspective that I get pushback for besides you on this. Right. And my answer to that is, is, is that you got to meet these young people where they're at. We are used to things being easy and being the center of attention. And when you do something like this, you are no longer making it easy. And we are not the center of attention. We have to conform to you now. And I know people are like, oh, Gen Z suck. Yeah, we kind of do. But also, like, this is a convenience world, right? My Wi-Fi not working at Tri-State was the hardest part of my Tri-State experience because I'm used to always having Wi-Fi, right? And, like, I get mad about that stuff. And so do young people, right? Okay. You ready for my counter? I'm ready. I'm right. ready. So, so, so if I go on TikTok right now and I put in hashtag uh, summer camp job for teens, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to get some, some overconfident, you know, 18 year old chick that's telling me top five great things that you should do in the summer. If you're a teen looking for a job <laughs> that you can, that you can, that can uh, work three hours a day and sit on your ass in your kitchen and make $30 an hour or drive around DoorDash or some other kind of bullshit thing that is not, it, that is nothing. Nothing your, like working at a camp. Okay. Your perspective on TikTok's unparalleled. I so, love you. So th that's the good stuff. Okay. okay. So so yes, th they are looking for a low stakes job. Working at camp is not a low stakes job. Mm -hmm. Working at camp is taking care of other people's children. It is a high stakes job. Totally. Okay? And it is completely different than any other experience they've ever had if they've never been to camp. Okay. If they've okay. never been to camp. And, and, and you're treating this as this transactional bullshit thing, like on, on Zoom, we're gonna give you a half hour Zoom, then here you go, mm. I'm gonna send you all this stuff, I'm gonna pay you $4,200, see mm. an orientation, okay? That doesn't seem very realistic to me. And if they come out to you, that is also, that is like jumping through the first hoop. That's like a rite of passage. That is showing that they have a baseline commitment level. Showing up on a, on a Zoom in your underwear, Okay, you know, between whatever you're doing, okay, with your with your girlfriend in the background making faces at you, okay, that is not that doesn't show me much. Getting your ass out to my camp. And by the way, you see the backdrop of this camp here, Justin, and yeah. you know damn well that the camp you're working at is even nicer. Okay, damn if someone right. shows up at Everwood Day Camp, even in three feet of snow, they're gonna be like, "Holy shit, this place is beautiful. This is amazing." Oh I want to You're you're. You're signing you are so you are so you are so unwell. You are so unwell, post. Andrew. Oh, I from mean, the Instagram post. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna know how nice it is here. When do I have to start Come paying on. for you to live in a in a home, man? Oh my god. You know, because guess what? Your camp, your camp, Andy, for as beautiful as it is in that backdrop, looks like jack freaking crap in right now at pitch black darkness when you're bringing these people in for their interviews. So don't tell me about the aesthetics of your camp. Also, how am I supposed to get my college student that I interviewed today who goes to Fairfield in Connecticut well, forget is that. from around here? About that Wait, person. but we're pause talking again. about the local person. Okay. But when recruiting college staff, that's just a completely different ballgame. I'd love for you to talk to my sleepaway camp friends who are out in New Hampshire. That you want, like, you know, you're making a very day camp oh, argument. Sleep, I know she's a day sleepaway camp, camp friends who who they just take it for granted that like 15% of their staff are not going to show up at orientation. They just like accept that. Listen, I do not want any sleep with camp slander. We need to protect that industry, Andrew. Okay. I worry about that side of camping. Here's the thing. I lived with three guys my senior year of college. Two work for Goldman Sachs right now. They did all of their interviewing online. You could tell me that this is a high value job, high importance working with kids. So is managing money, right? We don't want the banks to fail. And you can blame that for why Silicon Valley Bank failed. And I see your face smirking like you want to say something stupid like that. But the, the oh, thing the is, is that giving the money back. Don't yeah, worry. here's the thing, Andrew. If Fortune 500 companies and retailers, none of my Lululemon interviews were in person, right? If Chick-fil-A, everything like this is being done on Zoom. So then you are the only person doing this. And when someone is looking at a summer job, nine times out of 10, they are not just looking at you. And for you to have your stick in the ground going, we've always done it this way. This is how we're going to do it. You tell me a million times, this is how camps and other industries fail and die. Mm -hmm. So for you to stand on this hill and say that is, a, is full of hypocrisy, in my opinion. 
All right. Well, all I'm saying is that if people live relatively local and are able to come, I want to do it in person. I'm not sure, Andy. That. I would love to too, but I don't, you know, piss Dr. Pepper. You know, I don't live in perfect make believe land. Okay. So because of this, I have to meet people where they're at. And people don't expect for it to be in person. I, you know what, Andy? I don't even say, I don't even say in my you can book me like auto send emails that this interview is going to be on Zoom. I just send the Zoom link. And I when I even talk to people on the phone who call, which is so rare, or just like slide up on Instagram and say, hey, like, are you guys still hiring? I just say, yeah, schedule an interview with me. And no one has ever asked if it's in person or it's on Zoom. It's always been assumed it's on Zoom. And my communication has been crap that it has that it has to be on Zoom. Honestly, are your I got to fix gonna that. Are be stuff. online or your trainings going to be in person? No, my trainings are going to be in person. I, well, I, I bet they're going to be waiting for the Zoom link. That's no, they're say. not. In. Yeah, they You're are. such a boomer right now. <laughs> You're such an old person saying this. Come on. So, so you mentioned in your presentation, Justin, you said yeah. we're not competing with internships. You're right. We're not. But yet, it's it. We could create them, right? You mentioned uh, mm -hmm. helping. I create. I create. I create a digital uh, media internship today for yeah. a 16 year old in high school because I just want to do him a favor, put it start his resume. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you could totally. You could totally start internships. I mean. With colleges, you know, we're, we're working on one right now with a, a certain college in the Massachusetts area. And you just got to be super communicative. And you basically got to tell them everything that you're going to do and then have them agree to it, not the other way around, because you don't want to be working for them in this game. You want to basically write up three pages of chat GPT-4 <laughs> and then go, this is our history <laughs> for lack of a better Can we term. talk about Matt Cavoli for a second? I love this kid. I love I your love Matt Cavoli example. I love Matt Cavoli. Can I love this guy. Quick Matt Cavo Cavoli let me story. let me let me tell you guys, he's gonna be on the market next year. I told him he can't work at Everwood after this summer because he's one of those 22 year olds who can work in the camp industry for the next 30 years. And I gotta help him find a job. Um, so he's 16, stumbles in here. He was uh for his story, he was working at a Chinese restaurant around the corner and saw a job posting. It was like, I hate working at this Chinese restaurant. I'm gonna go work at this camp. He's, he was 16. Now he's 22. He's going to be a division leader for fourth graders here at camp. He's one of those people who's just really good at it and just is the camp culture embodied. And so Matt is from Mansfield, which is a local town around Sharon, where Everwood's located. He goes to Mary Mack College, is graduating this year, which is awesome. He uh, originally was studying business. Now he's studying education. He's one of those people who can't yeah. convert it, right? And so when Matt, when I post a photo of Matt going three, two, one with his hands in the middle and lifting it up, right? And Matt reposts it. Matt has 1,200 followers who are predominantly based out of Mary Mack College, local college, and Mansfield, local area. So it's getting, and the crossover rate of Everwood's about like 50. So 1,150 people's eyes in high impact areas for me to staff are going to see a really awesome, cool, charismatic, kind guy doing awesome stuff with kids at my camp and going, that's what Matt talks about when he's so passionate about camp. I could potentially do that. And they're hiring, holy crap. And it's like the best form of free F-R-E-E -E marketing ever. Cause I'm getting the right people to see it with the right message conveyed by the right ambassador. It's a win, win, win. And, and I like in your session, how you, you correlated that to Bam Bam promoting Wiggins for the All-Star team. Yeah. So if anyone knows anything about K-pop, um, Bam Bam's a Thai singer and he loves the Golden State Warriors and loves Andrew Wiggins and posted something on Twitter during the All-Star vote two years ago for the NBA. He said, vote for Andrew Wiggins. He's my favorite player on the Warriors. And Andrew Wiggins got 1.5 million votes in less than a day. And because of that this year, the fan voting was not 50% of the aggregate because that's why Andrew Wiggins was a starter. He's not even top 50 player. And so it, this is the way of influencers. Kendall Jenner posts a photo with lipstick. Lipstick sells out like that, right? Like this is how the world works. I wait for people to tell me things to do it. I look at Yelp. I look at Glassdoor. I look at Rate My Professor, right? We have to do the same thing with our jobs. But instead of our ambassadors being Addison Ray, Charlie D'Amelio, and if you don't know who those people are, you should get familiar with them um, because your kids definitely know who they are. Um, I use my local community heroes who work at my camp. It's the same effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I guess Summer Camp Society did that with me to get people to go to their Wednesday night uh, 
uh, thing. I was sort of like Kim Kardashian, right? They just threw me out. Yeah, you are washed up, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> you need some Botox, man. Holy hell, you don't look like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> So, so I loved your, your story about, about your local commuter colleges, about ah. mining, mining their Instagrams, going and finding their clubs. Mm. They all, yeah. have, all their clubs have Instagram handles. And, yeah. and then reaching out and direct messaging those folks and stuff. We're going for the influencers. And, and a lot of times, just even those people at those clubs running the Instagram might be someone, mm -hmm. uh, right? Like I need a mountain biking specialist. Trust me, this week, I'm going to have people mining for you know, outdoorsy biking club things, because uh, it, I'm starting to get worried about that. I'm so sick and tired of listening to people present at conferences and saying, you need to go to a club meeting and present at a college. As someone who was just in college and ran clubs, there's no way in hell I'm letting you in at a club meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not letting some 50 year old come in and talk for 10 minutes. And then people are saying, these presenters are saying, yeah, send them your information and have them present for you. No, I don't trust anyone to talk about my camp like that in that capacity to a large range of potential new staff. So I have to do it myself, right? Now, yeah, I could petition as a younger person. I might have more luck to get into a room and talk to people, but why not communicate in the same way that people are used to be receiving messages? So Curry College, 15 minutes down the road, Curry College, local commuter school, right? What do I do? I go on their rosters for their sports teams. I send their players emails because you can figure out, ugh, I don't want to get too much into this because it's like hard to explain in a podcast format. But look, all colleges are probably in a Microsoft or Google suite type format and all of their emails are the same. So it's pretty easy to figure out what their email is. Yeah, you you can use, email, yeah, you just need one. Thankfully, I had one person who worked at Curry Co who works here already, who's from Curry College, and I was just able to lift their template and use it for everyone. And I can send a mass email to 500 athletes in a minute if I really want to. Um, and so, what I also do is I go on their their student Instagrams. And so, what I mean by that is Curry College has an Instagram. It's less than 7,000 followers. Again, small commuter school in the area. They what does it follow? 300 things. All clubs, right? Curry College Exercise and Fitness is one of the clubs has 500 followers, follows 300. What does it mean? It means it follows the people who are highly engaged in the club, not just anyone. So I open it up and I just message people in the club. Hey, you know, your profile seems like a great fit for working. Actually, I have the camp message. I could read yeah, it I could no, pull up right now and that, read it. People do this to me on LinkedIn repeatedly. Yeah, so I, I send it and I send them with an interest form and I send it with three photos of staff who kind of look like them based on their profile doing cool crap. And that's how I got my soccer specialist immediately. And I'll send, oh man, on a given, and I got to slow down, honestly, because I, I don't have a lot of room at my camp now to hire so quickly like this on a mass capacity. I can't factory farm anymore. And so I have to be a little more surgical with it. But yeah, I mean, I would send like for every 10, I would definitely get one and a half responses. And it, it's a copy and paste thing with a name change. So it takes me about 10 seconds to send one. So if I can do, I don't know, a hundred in less than five minutes and get 10 responses for free. Wow. That sounds yeah. pretty good. No, I just, uh, I, I was, I had an ad in indeed for a maintenance uh, job kind of thing. And, uh, and I think that they were like, okay, so if you're going to pay for this, it's going to be $33 per application is what they were trying to get me to buy on. Um, all right. So anyway, I hope Indeed doesn't sponsor this because you're slandering <laughs> them, and I also hate Indeed more than you because I just think it's crapshoot. And I think, I think perfect. honestly, here's the thing: if you're paying ten thousand dollars or more on Indeed, um, use that money and hire a young person. That's my recommendation for a camp listening to this, because it is honestly sickening. Because I'm not going as a college student, as a as a recently retired college student, but also someone who's still in touch with all his college friends. No one is going on Indeed, Handshake, or any of these things looking for a part-time seasonal job. I'm sorry. It's just not the, the, the thing that people mm -hmm. use that for. When I was in these stupid freshman stems in college or the career center would send emails or whatever the hell, it was like, go find your next internship, not camp seasonal type of outdoor job, mm -hmm. internship or full-time job using these services that we pay a lot of money as a college to have, not camp. Right. So why are we spending money to advertise where no one's looking? Because it's easy. This is like international staffing, you know, for sleepaway camps. Mm. It's just easy. You put it out there and they'll send mm. you things. And I know. Hard work, you know. What do you know? 
Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's talk about interviewing a second. I oh, love yeah. Your whole, hey, what music do you listen to? Mm. I love that that whole way of talking to folks. Uh, I love your, you know, it shouldn't be a gotcha firing line kind of mm. situation. We're giving people scenarios that they're going to step into a bear trap on. Um, I just, I think that's really important. Here's something I'll say. I'll, I'll give you a disclaimer. I was talking with someone from the sleepaway camp before that session. They were saying, you know, I'm having a hard time with someone who's on my staffing team because they, they, they connect so well with the people they're interviewing on Zoom. They have to do it on Zoom. They're in the middle of nowhere. And then like 30 minutes into the interview, they ask a question of, so you're in the cabin and one camper starts talking about how much they support Black Lives Matter. And another camper starts talking about Blue Lives Matter. What do you do? And they said, from that moment on, the, the whole like experience of the interview is weird. Mm-hmm. Because let me tell you something. One, every camp is going to have a different answer to that, unfortunately, right? And whatever that person says in the interview to answer that question is 99.999% going to be wrong or not perfect enough to the standards of your camp. So instead of making some Gen Z person who's taking a risk in doing an outdoor weird job where they're taking a pay cut and they all these fun face, things. They might even be face to face, which is ugh. Yeah, yeah. You're now going to play this game of gotcha where for the rest of the interview, they're going to be like, holy crap, I bombed it. This is awkward because you, know well, you know what else I learned at Tri-State and at National Andy? That everyone my age has anxiety. That's what I learned at every session. <laughs> everyone in Gen Z has anxiety. You want to give people anxiety? This is how you do it, okay? <laughs> and so they're doing these things and then people run away and then ghost them. And they go, how come I'm getting ghosted? Well, because you didn't treat them in the way that they would want to be treated. You played gotcha with them. And now you feel all smart because you got to lay down wisdom, but you're actually so dumb for doing something like that. And so, yeah, I, you know, we play the whole cute game of like, oh my God, welcome. Like my name's Justin. This is what I do. I, I, oh, I do that. I do that script. And then they do that. And I go, oh, sweet. Like, no way. So like, what kind of music do you listen to? And they tell me Taylor Swift. I got Bob Marley today. That was a good one. Um, Lady Gaga. They tell me these things. And I go, oh my God, yeah, born this way. Chromatica. And we talk the music because I, I can feel that. I can get people telling me they like Polo G today. You know, you I don't know if you know who Polo G is. Nope. Hell, we're talking about Polo G on the day camp pod. We are with the culture. Ooh, Holy you hell. Be literally making up the name. <laughs> I'm, 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 I am I'm, not. Yeah. Oh, man. And so we'll, we'll talk about music, like young people talking about young people music, you know, so mm-hmm. thanks for teaching me about Bob Marley, you saved me today. Uh, <laughs> and so then, then I can go, all right, sick, like great taste in music, even if I totally disagree, but we got to welcome people, make them feel included. And I go, oh yeah, so like, why do you want to work at a camp this summer? And then they're like, I'm like, sweet, sweet, sweet. Like, what's your favorite color? And it's just, honestly, not that it's like one fun question, one like interview work related question but I can do a game similar to that and within 30 minutes I can ask questions of like what are the prime directives of this job you know how do you want the kids to remember you and ask more work related camp culture related questions and ask fun questions because ultimately as the director of staffing for Everwood when I step back from that 30 minute interview with like a kid I interviewed today named Yuri right I have to go okay do I think Yuri would fit in here at camp right? Like, do I think that like he would succeed socially and people would enjoy being around him? Yes. Okay. So I need to figure that out. That's big, right? Mm -hmm. Big. Function now, like, could they actually do this job? So I pose it in a lot of ways, but like the oversimplified is, would I trust you taking care of the dog that I would do anything for, i.e. Callie, our dog, right? Mm -hmm. Would I trust you with Callie, who is a sassy 100 pound, five foot seven dog? Callie, just talking about you. Yeah. So it's like, cause I don't have kids and I know some people go like, would I trust you with my kids? Like that is the closest thing to my kids, mm-hmm. right? And if I can answer both to that and I know that's like a horrible example because you know I'm comparing kids to dogs and whatever, oversimplifying here friends, then I feel comfortable offering this person a job because I can train them on everything else. And that is the whole point of staff training. Get them comfortable in the community and I'm gonna grow them. And then as someone in my job, I'm gonna make sure they positively progress both developmentally and experientially during their summer. And that's why I have division leaders. That's why I've had counselors. And that's why I exist, right? And that's why we have community support people at Everwood or like, you know, extra staff who float or things like that. And so it's like, okay, let's like actually build and scale in an appropriate model. Start with a strong foundation and go from there. 
Okay, so we're, we're got to wrap up, but I want to just touch We've got to wrap up. I got to touch on a couple of other things. Yeah, well, you know what? Once you hit the hour mark, you know, people in your generation just start fading. Quick, Look, but it, you know? I feel, I don't think a 23-year-old's listening to this, Andrew. I think it's like a 46-year-old <laughs> on their way to work. Sorry, not to bring out your target Listen, audience. Listen, the summer camp society might re retweet this or something, and we'll get a lot more. Oh but um, <laughs> the, the um, value, value your staff. We say we value the staff right um and and the staff experience and and orientation and stuff this is a fun job literally fun is the only thing that we have over all these other options that they could be doing for the summer right and making friends and you know that kind of thing so and yet we create situations whether it's orientation or staff nights or whatever that are not really that fun and you it, great example you had is like let's just get them pizza right which oh, by the way God. never these days because never works. I got people that are gluten free. I got people that are dairy free. I got, you know, <laughs> I got to get salads. So you have to accommodate, Andrew. To is accommodate. that the line? That is what you I must just do. Can't... It's inclusion, wow. baby. I'm just saying, oh, just get Jesus. 50 pies doesn't work anymore. But um, but you made a point that it should be more than that, right? You know, this is the whole rock star thing that we're talking about. We're calling them rock stars. We should give them some rock star treatment. And well, I look at it, I look at parties, look, having stop, things. slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> so I love, I spend most of my time in hiring and recruiting, getting people who never been to or worked at camp, but are the most camp people ever, right? I love expanding their horizons with this stuff. And so if I'm selling fun, which is what I sell, I have to back it up, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, I'm not a liar. So when it comes to rewarding staff or training staff, it all has to be fun. I cannot deviate from my message. So when it comes to orientation, the first thing I'm not going to ever do is paperwork because that's not fun. I told you that this is the most fun job. Paperwork is not fun. I have to make sure you come back to the next training and want to still work at camp. So we're going to have fun at rookie training, right? And so and the goal, as I always joke about at rookie training, for as silly as this sounds, is I want you to be able to go to the next training and know who you're going to sit next to. That's my goal of rookie training. Not to show you where the third bathroom is at camp, because you're not going to remember it, right? And so instead of going on a laborious walking tour where they get fire hose with a bunch of BS and, you know, paperwork, it's like, yeah, I would much rather play pickleball, have a pool party, and have pizza and make some mores at the end. Because some mores at the end of a giant walking tour and a bunch of lectures and paperwork is a Band-Aid on a freaking grenade wound for that experience that someone had. And they're not coming back to your next training. Sorry, that's why your attrition's that way, right? And so I, you got to back up what you're selling. And then when it comes to camp and camp experience, like, yeah, something I work on with our administrative director here is keeping groups no larger than 15 and opening up more groups because I can staff. I'd much rather staff more and have more groups of 15 than groups of 18, right? And hiring extra people and having more people floating around to make people's lives easy. I want to massage away problems for people so that they enjoy it. And you talk about, you know, like valuing your people and treating them like rock stars. I look at this like a country club, you know, when the high rollers and the longtime members of country clubs walk in, everyone looks around and goes, holy crap, we have to be on our A++ game rather than our A game. For me, that high roller at a country club is the new 19-year-old staff member who could potentially work here for two more summers who is so talented in X, Y, and Z, so I want to make sure that they come back. And how do I do that? I give them a good freaking time so that they don't even think about going, hey, I'm going to take an internship next summer. No, they're like, I want to be back at Everwood, even though I'm making, you know, mathematically, I don't know, like $8 an hour in a $15 minimum wage area or whatever. It's like, this was such a great time. I cannot imagine doing something else during my college thing, right? That's until the ideal parents, world. Until their parents tell them otherwise, but yeah. Until their parents tell them otherwise, but guess what? You know, if I have 250 staff, then that's not a huge deal. If I don't think that's going to be everyone. So mm -hmm. that, that's, my, that's my spiel on that. All right. Well, Justin, listen, thanks for your time. Thanks for spreading this. Can I, can I plug something real fast? Can I Absolutely. just plug something? All right, I just got to open up my GCAL here. I got to figure out the exact date. I'm bad with dates off the top of my head. All right, here's what I'm going to say. I had a great time talking at Tri-State. It was awesome. Um, I got a lot of emails. I got a lot of requests to help out and things like that. 
and uh, I'm, I'm doing my best with them. I respond to everyone and whatnot. I love you all. You know, God bless the good fight that is camping and staffing and everything. But a lot of people just have questions, and I hate, <laughs> I hate responding in email to like book long answers to things. So uh, Friday, March 31st from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, I'm doing just like a Q&A on staffing. I already have a bunch of people who RSVP to it um, from Sleepaway, from day camp and everything like that. And I'd much rather do that every other week and just help people in a live format than to be playing email tag and things like that. And so if you want the information for that, Andy, what's the best way? Or should I just read my Zoom ID? You're like, going gonna to send that to me and we're going to get it on the show notes. So that people- Okay. Can go it's going to be on the show notes. It's already sent to you, thankfully. So I've saved myself those clicks. Um, but yeah, I'm more than happy to help you. I think, honestly, there's communication crisis with reaching young people. And we just have to kind of, uh, as an industry, change our approach and the messaging around it. And uh I think that it's a little it's bit a very, of like a hey, look, Justin. Yeah. This is this is no different than it's ever been. Multi generational stuff, right? Yeah. It's just that technology has sort of made your generation um, even more different than the the, pre the previous one. So oh, totally. And, and and take advantage of it, right? Yeah. And we need to listen to young people. And not people who aren't doing this for a living and people who aren't succeeding, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Utilize your young staff. To say that as nice as I can, because like it does kind of drive me crazy to hear 55 year olds who don't work in camping tell me how to recruit young people and what they think about it. Because I'm like, you're not doing it and it, you're not, and people are struggling. So it's, it's well, hard. Most of the 55 year olds I know are growth mindset people. Who I know. Yeah. You talk. And, and I agree. Gleaning plenty of information from this. I agree. I just want people to get good advice. That's and, all. And I by the way, that this episode goes out to the seventy-five-year-old guy that was in Justin's session. Who lo I love that person. That was the best part. Was I? I was saying basically how, you know, you have bigger fish to fry. And he was like, "I'm seventy-five. What do I do now? I'm not interviewing the everyone." My time now. Right. And I was just like, enjoy camp. Do camp stuff that no one else can do as a 75 year old pillar in the community, you know, lean into it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I love that guy. A lot of my friends that started when we were younger and we said that we absolutely had a competitive advantage over the other camps because we were younger and we could connect better with the applicants. Um, and Oh my and God. I feel bad when I'm in person with next other people and it's like two 50 year olds with kids. And it's just like a different language speaking to 16 year olds versus me of like, I'll go on a 10 minute tangent about some anime that's new. And they're like, think I'm speaking Korean next to them. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. I don't think chat GPT could, could do that. Well, you know what? You could ask chat GPT to talk like a, uh, you know what? I can't wait till chat GPT replaces me. I'm, I'll be, I'm waiting. I would love to, I would love for that to happen. I, you know, as much as I love recruiting, training, all that jazz with staff, I care about growing them once they're here, not recruiting them. I'm like more of an E21 guy. and like that. That's what I want to be doing, not. But we got to get them in the door first. Got to get them into the church. Yep. Got to get them in. To, they got to drink the Kool Aid. They got to get them uh -huh. in. So they can drink it. Totally. All right, folks. I want to thank the Go Camp Pro Team, AM Skyer, and Commercial Recreation Specialists for allowing us to bring this podcast to you. If you like what you hear, you should subscribe to the Day Camp Pod on your favorite podcast platform. Check out the show notes from all our episodes at daycamppodcast.com, as well as contact info for the show, for Justin, for me my co-hosts tip and sam and thanks for listening and making yourself a better day camp pro we'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the day camp pod